Okay, now let's see what happens if the velocity comes in at an angle that is not 90. So if it comes in, let's say, uh, uh, theta is uh, less than 90 and greater than 0, somewhere between. So let's say you have a magnetic field like that. This is the magnetic field. And then the velocity comes in like this. For now, let's just say the charge is positive. And then this is the angle. OK. <clears throat> so now what's the force here? The force is still going to be the magnitude of the force is going to be QVB sine of theta. Right? This time theta is not 90. Another way to visualize this is to break this down like this. Write it as QB V sine of theta, and then write it as V perpendicular. So V sine of theta is the perpendicular component of the V per that is perpendicular to the B. So it's this component. Okay, so in other words, the only component of the V that experiences a force is the perpendicular component of the V. The parallel component of the V just doesn't feel a force. The parallel component is this one. Okay, so what's going to happen to this charge then? Well, the V parallel is going to make the charge go forward as if it's not even affected by the B. You know? The, char the P V parallel says, I don't even care about the existence of the B. It just keeps going forward. The V perpendicular, same thing happens to that as the, the case where it's 90. So V crossing the B into the board, so again goes like that. So what's the overall path of the thing going to look like now? V parallel is unaffected. The V perpendicular goes like that. So it looks like uh, the, whenever it's on the back, I do like a dotted line. You see? It's called a helix, like that. The, so the center of the circle of the helix moves forward at a rate, uh, we could kind of say it like this. Center of helix moves forward at speed of V parallel, which is what I said at the beginning. The V parallel is not affected by the B. It just keeps going forward. And then what's the radius of the orbit? So we can now come up with another equation. So what's the radius of the orbit? So now you have F equals mv squared over r. So again, derive, let, we can derive an equation for the r. Now the F is going to be qvb sine theta. And then the v that I'm going to put, since only the v perpendicular is affected by the circular motion, the V, you should only put the perpendicular V, not the total V. Okay? So this V is V perpendicular. Okay? So it's going to be M over R V sine theta. So now when we solve for R, one of the V's, one of the sine thetas cancels over here, and we get MV over R uh, over, no, over QB.
sine theta. So it resembles the same equation as we derived for the 90 degree case, except you got now sine theta. So let's see if it makes sense. If the theta is 90, and I put sine of 90, it should give us the same formula that we got, right? So if theta is 90, you get the r equals mv over qb, OK? If the theta is uh, 0, you get what? 0. Does that make sense? So if it comes in completely parallel, it has no radius. So that makes sense also. And if the theta is somewhere between 0 and 90, then it's going to be, uh, like let's say theta is uh, 30 degrees, for example. Then the radius is going to be mv over qb. sine of 30, which is a half. So it's going to be half the radius. So it makes sense because uh, less of it is going to be affected by the magnetic field. So the radius should be smaller. Okay.